Good afternoon. I will perform an experiment which is really helpful for undergraduate honors as well as general student. Before going to discuss the detailed procedure of this experiment, first of all we have to know the theory behind this experiment and the name of my experiment is determination of pH of unknown buffer solution by color matching method. So first of all we have to know about pH and buffer solution. So let us start with pH. How one can define a pH of a solution? The pH of a solution can be mathematically defined as negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration and this definition is basically applicable for dilute solution. For concentrated solution pH is defined as negative logarithm of activity of hydrogen ion in the solution. Actually pH means the measurement of acidity or alkality in a aqueous solution. It represents the me measure of acidity and alkality in a given sample and pH play a very important role in some chemical as well as biochemical reaction. We know that pH of pure water is 7. If any water sample have pH more than 7 or less than 7 that water sample are not considered to be pure. So the pH value of any water sample indicates the types of impurity present in the water sample. Now the next question how to measure the pH of a solution that is the measurement of pH. We can measure pH experimentally by the two method. One method is indicator method and another method is instrumental method. In the indicator method, in the indicator method we use a chemical called indicator which is very sensitive to pH and we know that each indicator has a definite pH range on which it will change its color and this pH range is actually called the indicator range of a given indicator. By using indicator method we can roughly estimate the pH of a given solution. For more accurate measurement we have to use pH meter. Actually pH meter gives more accurate value of pH of any solution. Now buffer. What do you mean by buffer solution? The buffer solution is such types of solution which has a constant pH and it resists pH even after the addition of small amount of acid or alkali to it. Depending upon the pH value the buffer solution generally classified into two category acidic buffer solution and basic buffer solution. Actually acidic buffer solution is a mixture of weak acid and its salt and the basic buffer solution is a mixture of weak base and its salt. If we take an example of acidic buffer solution the most common example of acidic buffer solution is the mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate and the most common example of basic buffer is the mixture of ammonium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Now how to estimate the pH of buffer? The pH of any buffer solution whether it is acidic buffer or basic buffer that can be mathematically calculated with the, uh, by an equation called Henderson equation. According to Henderson equation, 
pH of any buffer, say acidic buffer solution, can be expressed as pH equal to pKa log concentration of salt by acid. Here pKa is equal to negative logarithm of k. k is actually the equilibrium constant or ionization constant or dissociation constant of weak acid. It has a particular value at a given temperature. Now, how to estimate the pH of unknown buffer solution? In order to estimate the pH of unknown buffer solution, we have to make a series of standard buffer solution, then add a definite quantity of indicator to each of the prepared buffer solution. Depending upon the pH value, each indicator will appear to be a different color. Now, the color of the unknown buffer solution can be calculated by matching the color of known buffer solution. Now, to perform this experiment, we need certain glass operators and chemicals. Basically, we need volumetric flux, bullet with stand, volumetric flux, glass stopper bottle, and pipette here, conical flux and beaker and funnel and test tube and volumetric. Now to for perform this experiment we need certain chemicals that is sodium hydroxide solution, acetic acid solution, oxalic acid solution, distilled water, phenophthalene and universal indicator. As I already mentioned that buffer is a solution of mixture of weak acid and its salt. So we have to prepare the weak acid solution and its salt solution. So we want to prepare a series of standard acidic buffer solution. Actually acidic buffer solution is a mixture of uh, acetic acid and sodium acetate solution. Now acetic acid is commercially available in our lab but sodium acetate is prepared by mixing acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. So we have to prepare an appropriate strength of acetic acid and sodium hydroxide solution. So how to proceed? First we have to prepare 250 ml approximate 0.5 normal acetic acid solution and 250 ml 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution. Acetic acid and sodium hydroxide are secondary standard so we have to prepare an approximate solution. The problem with secondary standard substance that the secondary standard substance are generally not pure, they are generally hydroscopic, they are more reactive in atmosphere. So in order to avoid such difficulty, we have to prepare an approximate solution because direct weight of sodium hydroxide and acetic acid is not possible. So here we prepare an approximate 0.5 normal acetic acid and an approximate 0.5 normal NaOH. How would you prepare 250 ml approximate 0.5 normal acetic acid? If we dissolve around 8 to 9 ml glacial acetic acid with 242 ml distilled water, we can make this solution. And how do you prepare approximate 250 ml 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide? We know the equivalent weight of sodium hydroxide is 40 gram. So by using the concept of normality, if you want to prepare one normal solution, 640 gram sodium hydroxide is required. 
So to, pre to prepare 1000 ml one normal sodium hydroxide solution, we need 40 gram sodium hydroxide. Here we have to prepare 250 ml 0.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution. By using simple calculation, it is clear that we need 5 gram sodium hydroxide. So 5 gram sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 250 ml distilled water and we can make this solution. Those two solution are actually prepared in my lab. Now here we prepare the sodium hydroxide and acetic acid solution whose strength is unknown to us. In order to know the strength of those two approximate solution we need primary standard solution. In this case oxalic acid used as a primary standard because oxalic acid is pure, it is not hydroscopic, it is not reactive in air. So we can take an exact weight of oxalic acid with the help of digital balance. So here we want to prepare 100 ml exact 0.5 normal oxalic acid. How would you prepare? If we know the equivalent weight of oxalic acid that is 63 gram. Now if we using the concept of one normal solution that is to prepare 1000 ml one normal oxalic acid solution we need 63 gram oxalic acid. Now we want to prepare 100 ml 0.5 normal oxalic acid solution. So the amount of oxalic acid required that is can be mathematically calculated and is is equal to 3.15 gram. So by dissolving 3.15 gram of oxalic acid in a 100 ml distilled water, we can make 100 ml exactly 0.5 normal oxalic acid solution. Now, why we prepare this primary standard? Because with the help of this primary standard, we can easily estimate the strength of sodium hydroxide. And this process is called standardization of sodium hydroxide with the help of standard oxalic acid. How would you perform this process? In order to perform this process, we have to take sodium hydroxide in a bullet. Now we have to take a definite quantity of oxalic acid in a conical flux. Suppose we take 10 ml oxalic acid in a conical flux and 10 ml oxalic acid in a conical flux is added with the help of 10 ml pipette. We add 10 ml oxalic acid in a conical flux. Now we will perform an acid based titration. Now it will be standardized with the help of sodium hydroxide and for such process we add 2 drops of phenophthalene indicator. Here the phenophthalene indicator is used to indicate the neutral point or equivalence point or end point of the reaction. How it indicate the neutral point by appearances of faint pink color in the solution. Now now we will perform simple acid based titration using phenophthalene indicator. And the neutral point is indicated by the appearances of faint pink color in the solution.
uh, this is the neutral point. Uh, at the neutral point, there is an appearances of faint pink color of the solution. Now, if we take the bullet reading, it is clear that to neutralize 10 ml oxalic acid, we need 9 ml sodium hydroxide solution. And this process has to be repeated twice to avoid the human error. If we know the strength of oxalic acid and volume of oxalic acid taken in a conical flux and knowing the volume of sodium hydroxide required to neutralize this 10 ml oxalic acid, we can easily calculate the strength of sodium hydroxide. So by standardization of NaOH, we can easily estimate the strength of sodium hydroxide with the help of standard oxalic acid solution. Now if we know the strength of sodium hydroxide, we can easily estimate the strength of acetic acid by similar tritration. So this process is also called standardization of acetic acid with the help of standard sodium hydroxide solution. How to perform this process? Similarly, we can perform this process by taking 10 ml acetic acid instead of 10 ml oxalic acid, add 2 drops phenolphthalein indicator and tritate the solution with sodium hydroxide solution. So, here Tenemal acetic acid is taken in a 250 ml conical flux Now add 2 drops phenolphthalein indicator to indicate the neutral point. Now perform this similar experiment that is acid based titration. And similarly the end point of this reaction will be indicated by the appearances of faint pink color in the solution. Here is the end point. So, end point of the reaction will be indicated by the appearances of faint pink color. Now, what is the volume required for the neutralization of acetic acid with the help of sodium hydroxide that can be estimated from bullet reading. So, knowing the volume of acetic acid taken in a conical flux and knowing the volume of sodium hydroxide required for neutralization of 10 ml acetic acid and if we know the strength of sodium hydroxide, we can easily estimate the strength of prepared acetic acid solution. So in this two standardization method, we can know the strength of sodium hydroxide solution as well as acetic acid solution. So with the help of the strength of prepared sodium hydroxide and acetic acid solution, we can make an exact 0.4 normal acetic acid solution as well as 0.4 normal sodium, hydrox sodium hydroxide solution by quantitative dilution. So here we make 250 ml exact 0.4 normal acetic acid and 250 ml exact 0.4 normal sodium hydroxide by quantitative dilution. Now 
finally we have to make 100 ml exact 0.2 normal acetic acid solution and 100 ml exact 0.2 normal sodium acetate solution in a 100 ml volumetric flux. So how we make this solution? Actually to make 100 ml exact 0.2 normal acetic acid solution by mixing 50 ml exact 0.4 normal acetic acid with distilled water. So, distilled water. We make 100 ml exact 0.2 normal acetic acid solution by mixing 50 ml exact 0.4 normal acetic acid with 50 ml distilled water. Now we have to make 100 ml exact 0.2 normal sodium acetate. This can be made by using 50 ml acetic acid with 50 ml sodium hydroxide. No. So 50 ml acetic acid is taken in a 25 ml pipette in two times. So we add 25 ml acetic acid in a 100 ml volumetric flux by 25 ml pipette.
Now add again 25 ml acetic acid with the help of 25 ml pipette. So we are actually adding 50 ml 0.4 normal acetic acid in a 100 ml volumetric flux. Now we have to fill this 100 ml volumetric flux with exact 0.4 normal sodium hydroxide up to this mark. So here we prepare exact 0.4 normal sodium hydroxide. We can fill. So in this way, we make two exact solution. One is 100 ml exact 0.2 normal acetic acid and another is 100 ml exact 0.2 normal sodium acetate. With the help of those two solution, we can easily make a series of standard buffered solution by mixing different, val different volume of acetic acid and sodium acetate in a test tube. So we can make the buffer solution by using this buffer chart. In the buffer chart it is clear that we have to mix different volume of acetic acid and sodium acetate in a test tube to prepare this buffer solution. To make this buffer solution we basically used a test tube. Ah. We add exact 0.2 normal acetic acid and 0.2 normal sodium acetate in such a manner that the total volume of the prepared buffer solution that would be exactly 10 ml. So how can you prepare this buffer solution? So we have to add a different volume of sodium acetate and acetic acid to each of the test tube. So this can be done with the help of 10 ml graduated pipette. So first we add different, vo different volume of sodium acetate to each of the test tube. Here In test tube 1, according to the buffer chart, we add 1 ml sodium acetate. In test tube 2, we add 2 ml sodium acetate. Similarly, in test tube 3, 3 ml, 3 ml sodium acetate, is added in test tube 3 and in test tube 4 we add 4 ml sodium acetate. Now in test tube 5 we have to add 5 ml sodium acetate as mentioned in the buffer chart.
in test tube 6 we had 6 ml sodium acetate Now, in test tube 7, we have to add 7 ml sodium acetate. In test tube 8, we add 8 ml sodium acetate. And finally, in test tube 9, we add 9 ml so we fill all the test tube with different volume of sodium acetate now we have to add different volume of acetic acid in each of the test tube subject to the condition that the total volume of the prepared buffer solution is 10 ml. So, So in test tube 1, we had, we have to add 9 ml acetic acid. And 1 ml acetic acid in test tube 9. In test tube 2, we had 8 ml acetic acid remaining 2 ml acetic acid in test tube 8. In test tube 3, we have to add 7 ml acetic acid. And remaining 3 ml in test tube 7. Now in test tube 4, we basically 
add 6 ml acetic acid and its remaining 4 ml intestine 6. Now, we add 5 ml acetic acid in test tube 5. So in this way, we can make a series of standard buffer solution by adding different volume of exactly 0.2 normal acetic acid with 0.2 normal sodium acetate in a test tube. Now how to estimate or how to calculate the pH of each prepared buffer solution. And this can be calculated with the help of Henderson equation. According to Henderson equation, we know that the pH of an acidic buffered solution is pKa plus log concentration of salt by acid. pKa has a given value for a given acid at a particular temperature. As we are using acetic acid, its pK value is 4.74. Now as we are making acetic acid and sodium acetate having same concentration because we are preparing exact 0.2 normal acetic acid and exact 0.2 normal sodium acetate. So the concentration of weak acid and its salt are same. So under such condition, the concentration of salt divided by concentration of acid becomes equal to volume of salt divided by volume of acid to make this buffer solution. So if we use those approximation, then the Henderson equation will be reduces to pH equal to pKa plus log volume of salt divided by volume of acid to make the buffer solution. Now in test tube 1, what would be the pH of buffer solution which has been produced in test tube 1? In test tube 1, the buffer solution is produced by mixing 1 ml sodium acetate with 9 ml acetic acid. So here the volume of salt is 1 ml and the volume of acid is 9 ml. So if we use the Henderson equation, then the pH of the solution which has been prepared in test tube 1 that can be calculated as pH equal to 4.74 plus log 1 by 9. If we use simple mathematics, the pH value would be 3.78. On similarly, we can easily calculate the pH value of each prepared buffered solution using the Henderson equation. Now we have to estimate the pH value of unknown buffered solution. To estimate the pH value of unknown buffered solution, we have to take unknown buffer solution in a another test tube. So here we have to estimate the pH value of 
this buffer solution. So this unknown buffer solution has to be taken 10 ml in a another test tube. So we are pipetting out 10 ml unknown buffer solution in a test tube. Now we take 10 ml unknown buffer in a test tube. We have to calculate the pH of this unknown buffer and this can be done with the help of indicator method. So we have to give a given amount of indicator to each of the prepared buffer solution. In this purpose we have to use a particular indicator because as I already mentioned each indicator has a definite range of pH on which it will change its color. So we have to use an appropriate indicator. In this case we have to use bromo crystal green indicator because bromo crystal green indicator will be acted within the pH value that is 3.7 to 5.7 and the prepared buffer solution has pH value within this range. So we have to use bromo crystal green indicator. So we have to add a definite quantity of bromo crystal green indicator to each of the test tube. So say we add 5 drops indicator. four, five, six. So we draw, add six drop indicator in test tube one. We have to add same drop indicator to each of the prepared buffered solution. One, two, three, four, five, six. So basically we add six drop indicator to each of the prepared buffered solution. Equal drops of indicator has to be added to each of the prepared buffer solution. So, Now we have to add 6 drop indicator to the unknown buffer solution.
So we have to add six drop appropriate indicator to each of the prepare buffer solution and add six drop indicator to the unknown buffer solution. Now the final step is to match the color of the indicator in unknown buffer solution with the known one. So we have to match. So this is not seems to be matched. So here the color of the unknown buffer solution that is the color of the indicator in unknown buffer is equally matched with the test tube number 5. So same color means same pH. So the pH of unknown buffer solution will be same as the pH at test tube number 5. So in this way we can easily estimate the pH of unknown buffer solution by this color matching method. This experiment can also be done with the help of this experiment can also be done with the help of spectrophotometer. By using spectrophotometer we can easily measure the absorbance of each color solution. If we know the relation between absorbance and pH of the solution then we can easily calculate the pH of unknown buffer solution by measuring absorbance and, and if we know the relation between pH and absorbance of a solution we can easily find out the pH of unknown buffer solution. So the pH of unknown buffer solution here we determined with the help of indicator and this pH value can also be determined with the help of UV visible spectrophotometer where we can measure the absorbance of different color solution and if we know the relationship between pH and absorbance we can easily calculate the pH of unknown buffer solution by spectrophotometrically. So in this case we does not use pH meter. So without the help of pH meter we can easily estimate the pH of unknown buffer solution. So thank you.